Filmmakers, I'm Joe the 3D Maker Noob and today we're going to talk a bit about lithophanes. Now for those of you who are possibly unaware, a lithophane is the, the science of grabbing a photo and then mapping kind of like a 3D, well map, over the photo and where there are dark shades on the photo you have more layers on top of each other where it's lighter you have less. Once you print it out and you put it behind a light source, you can actually see a pretty much perfect replica of the photo, but in 3D printed format. Now, a few days ago, I uploaded a photo on Twitter of a little thing that I did of me and my family, and everyone seemed to like it. A lot of you have asked me how I do it and what settings I use, what software. Coincidentally, Matter Hackers have just released their Matter Hackers build series um, filaments, which are the same awesome filaments that they usually ship out. However, they're much cheaper. And I have a spool of very white PETG, which they sent me. So I thought, okay, what I'm gonna today is I'm gonna show you guys how I do my lithophanes. I'm gonna use the PETG, which MetaHacker sent me. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump on the PC and I'm gonna show you guys the process. So first you're gonna go open up your Chrome or Internet Explorer and go to 3dp.rocks forward slash lithophane. And you will be presented with the website which will turn your images into lithophanes. So we're gonna start with the basics. So we're gonna grab an image. Now in my case, I'm gonna drag this image, which is a photo I took with my wife at Bay Area Maker Faire and also Adam Savage. Next, we will choose what kind of lithophane we want. You have all the options down here. I will probably choose, yes, outer curve. So I'm gonna hit refresh and we have the lithophane there. Now there are a few things which you need to adjust. First thing you're gonna do is go on to settings and go on model settings and you will be presented with some options to do. So you have the maximum size of the image. We're gonna leave that at 100. You can set the thickness of the image itself. You can also choose to do a border. I actually really like putting a border of possibly three millimeters because it just makes the lithophane much cleaner. For thinnest layer, vectors per pixel, and base depth or curve, I tend to not to change anything out of those. So we're gonna go back to model, gonna hit refresh, and we're gonna see the changes that happened. And as you can see, we now have a border. Next is the important settings. So we go to image settings. And as you can see, the first one is positive image and negative image. Now, what we want to do is make sure this is set to positive image, because currently if you print it like this, it will just look as a negative. So once you hit refresh, it will look like a negative there. It will print as a negative, but it will look as a positive once it's printed. So go back to image settings. You then have the option to uh, mirror the image. You have the option to flip the mirror, the image. Um, this is just the manual refresh or refresh an image click. Um, you can actually repeat the lithophanes to do more than one on the uh, X axis or on the Y axis. You can then also choose to mirror the copy or flip the copy, but we're gonna leave those as is. We're gonna go back to model gonna refresh one last time just to make sure that everything's fine and that's basically it now if we click on the other methods of lithophanes or other shapes once you click refresh this is what you're presented with so yeah lots of lots of different shapes to choose from so we're gonna stick to the outer curve we're gonna refresh and we're gonna download the model Next, you're gonna open your slicer. In this case, it's Simplify 3D. We're gonna drag the uh, lithophane, which we have just downloaded there. And as you can see, it's looking decent. Now, a few things to set up um, and some things I highly recommend. And the first thing is the layer height. I usually print lithophanes at around 100 microns uh, because you need as much detail as possible. Now. Ironically, on my CR10, I have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle with the Volcano hot end, but it still works fine for me. Ideally, the smaller the nozzle, the more detail will come out. 
Next thing is printing speed. Uh, when it comes to lithophase, I do not like to go over 20 millimeters a second because I find that it becomes much more clear um, once it's printed. Finally, it's the temperatures. I'm going to be using MetaHackers PETG um, and I'm using PETG because a lithophane will spend a lot of time next to a heat source, so you want something heat resistant, so I find that PETG works very well. And also something very important, filament type or filament color matters as well. Clear filaments will not show as good on lithophanes, at least that's something that I've experienced. So ideally, something opaque and white is ideal for the right shades. Finally is a brim. I highly recommend you use a brim um, because the lithophane is so thin that it ideally would require a bit of extra help to adhere to the build plate. So putting a brim always helps. Once that's done, we're gonna click OK, prepare to print. I'm gonna have a look at the result. And this is the generated preview. Now, something to keep in mind, you might come across these open areas here. Don't fret too much. In my case, that is happening because I have a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and the walls are too thin. If that happens and that bugs you a bit, just slightly, slightly increase the size of the lithophane in your slicer and those should go away. However, if you have a smaller nozzle, this should not be the problem. So now that that's done, we're gonna save to SD card and send it off to print. And here it is. Now, this is quite small, but you can obviously do it larger. But for the sake of just showing you guys how I do these little things, um, a small one will do just fine. Now, the awesome thing about this is that when you look at it just like it is here, it doesn't seem to make much sense. You can kind of see that it's, there, it's like art. But once you raise it up against a light source, it is absolutely incredible the amount of detail that is replicated from the photo. And I absolutely love these. And it's as simple as that. And I have to say that these things, whoever created them, absolute genius because these make for absolutely awesome little gifts. And I highly recommend that you try it out. A uh, few suggestions, try to use photos which have a bit of a high contrast. So the shadows can come out much more and the photo is much clearer. As I said, try to use the smallest diameter nozzles that you have, print in the slowest speeds and use very fine layers. The more of those settings you use, the better the end result will be. So that is it for me guys. Thank you very much for watching. Huge shout out to Matter Hackers for providing me with the filaments for this episode. Make sure you check them out. Their new filament range, Matter Hackers Build Series, is the same absolutely awesome quality that they usually ship out, um, but they're cheaper. And who doesn't like cheaper filament? You can buy a spool of one kilo PLA for like 20, $21, which is great. And don't forget, if you're in the States, it's free shipping, so yeah, all good. Thanks once again. Please leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys have any questions whatsoever. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.